Hey everybody, Darren Voros here. Today I'm with Fern Gauthier, uh, otherwise known as the King of Kingston, and we're going to talk about all things Burr and building your business because Fern is one of the guys that has done amazingly well with his strategy, but also doing multiple transactions at the same time. And I want to pick his brain on how he's able to build a team out to be able to do multiple properties at one time. Before we get into it with Fern, if you haven't done so already, you can hit the subscribe button. Uh, you can also hit the notification bell and please feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. And without further ado, let's get into it. Fern, great to have you here. Tell us a little bit about who you are as a real estate investor and what you do in, in this space. Yeah, um, yeah, I, um, I've kind of been a hobby investor for about 17, 18 years now. I, uh, you know, my first house I ever bought was a fourplex and I you know, did house hacking, lived in one unit and rented out the other three. Uh, but like I said, that was kind of a hobby investor. I, I, I didn't, you know, I wish I knew then what I knew now. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, two and a half years ago, you know, I had a, a life change and, uh, and with that, I, I, I decided, okay, it's time to, uh, you know, um, start anew and, and, and what do I know? What, what was my interest? What was I passionate in? And real estate was, uh, a progression for me. Um, and uh, yeah, so for two and a half years, I, I've been, uh, you know, an active investor, educating myself and, uh, you know, wanting to go big and in, in building a business, not just on my own, but with, uh, you know, partners and, and getting multiple deals under my belt. So that's the strategy you predominantly use, right? It's the buy, renovate, refinance, rent and, and repeat. And you do that with joint venture partners. Is that correct? That's right. So yeah, I, initially when I started, I was looking at just because um, I am working full time still. I still just still have a full time job, um, and so initially I was looking at turnkey properties. But uh, I, you know, I added uh, what uh, really added to my growth was adding uh, Burr, the Burr strategy, and, and uh, adding secondary suites to to single family homes. We had you on our meetup the other night, uh, and you shared a little bit of a sixty second business update. And I love the, the stat that you threw out and you did 12 transactions in 12 months this year. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a, a pretty busy, <laughs> pretty busy year. And, uh, and, and that came with some growing pains. Uh, you know, it hasn't been easy. Uh, you know, that on top of having the full-time job, it's been, uh, and then COVID, uh, it's been one heck of a year. <laughs> I bet. Well, let's dive in on that because I think obviously, um, you know, I have uh, some experience in this Burr category as well. I have not been able to do one a month uh, every month. So I'm guessing you had some overlap, um, multiple transactions going on at the same time. So tell me how you made that transition from doing one property at a time to going to multiples and, and how, what was the first step you took in, in be able to do that? So as I mentioned, my first, uh, when I first started, I was just looking at turnkey properties, mainly the, 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 the small multis. And, um, you know, there just aren't many of those that come along in Kingston, not, certainly not the cash flow. And so I had, our first year, I had a pretty slow growth. A um, couple of things came in, on, in line for me. One, um, I, had, I, I got a coach, you know, it, and that's one of my advice, uh, advice I'd give is, is get a coach who's, who's done what you're wanting to do. The stars align Kingston. I would say is probably the last city in Ontario that complied with the uh, Ontario mandate to allow secondary suites. We had a couple of small test spots, but they only allowed it last July is, is when they finally allowed it in, in the rest of the city. And so we went shopping April, May. So my coach was said, you know, I'll I know you're working full time. You want to, you know, be able to commit to the business, but I'll coach you through it to be able to do it. And, uh, and so, yeah, we closed on, on four properties in, in, in July of last year. So we went shopping April, May, you know, closed on four right off the bat and, uh, you know, haven't looked back. So when you closed on four transactions, uh, did you have a team built out at that point in terms of a construction team? What do you do in the transaction? How do you manage it? Are you uh, kind of GCing everything or do you have a construction manager and then you just oversee? Or are you on site most of the time? So I didn't have a team uh, that was, you know, I, I had two months for before, you know, a couple of months before we started closing on these properties to start building that team. But, uh, and so certainly, you know, when you have, when you're in that waiting period between closing, you have a couple of site visits you're allowed. So I did go in and kind of bring people in as part of an interview as, as well as, as um, uh, you know, getting ideas what to do the, the, the properties. So yeah, so that's how I kind of built the team is, is, is I use them to, hey, come and look at this property that I'm closing on, what do you suggest? Uh, and uh, kind of went from there. In terms of the, what do I do? So I don't pick up a hammer. Uh, um, <laughs> um, I did, so I initially I started off with, um, so I, I got a contractor, uh, he has a 
or had a team of six guys. Uh, he initially designated two guys to me. Uh, and so he, you know, he's the, the general contractor. I, I manage the project. I'm kind of telling him, here's, you know, here are the plans. Here's what we want to do. Uh, and, and, but he's managing the guys that are, you know, and cycling them through the different uh, properties. Um, but uh, yeah, so we kind of share that role of a, a GC. Right? So we, we, we're, we, we're always on the phone together. Yeah, for sure. So is he bringing in all the sub trades? Like, is he bringing in his electrician, plumber, all that kind of stuff? Or are you, or is he just like kind of general labor and then you're bringing in those secondary trades? Right. So initially, no, it was me that was uh, bringing in the sub trades. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's been part of my growth. It was, that was an important part of my growth, I think. It was, it was important that I kind of work with those people and to, to make sure who, you know, just to learn that part, that side of things. You know, now, now we're renting units and I'm, I'm, I'm managing properties. I I'm get a little bit more busy on my time. And so I am starting to delegate that stuff to the guy because, you know, now he, now I've got all six of his crew working for me. And, and so I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit bigger of a fish in his pond now. Actually, I'm his only, I'm, I'm his main, um, yeah, I'm 99% of his work right now. So, you know, he's dedicated to me. And so, you know, he's taking on some of those roles now. He actually, we had a conversation. This is just in the last couple months. Um, it actually is easier for him to coordinate those guys than it is for us to, to do it with me to be being the middleman. So when you started, did you, did you have like, did you try to get multiple, you obviously got multiple quotes, did, but did you try to have multiple, let's call it like electricians or plumbers working on different job sites and kind of testing that? Or did you just hire somebody to do all four and then just see how that went? Right. No, I, so um, I started off by using net, people that were recommended to me. Uh, and, and, uh, so I went from there, uh, and th that was part of my growth was, uh, you know, at the start I was a small fish. Right. And, uh, and so some people saw it. So my contractor, he saw it. Um, but, uh, my initial plumber, he didn't see it. And so, you know, we'd schedule an appointment for him to come off come on, on site and, and me show him what we needed. And, you know, he'd not show up and, and put me off. Oh, I got another job that I'm working on right now. And so, so, you know, I've had to go through, uh, I'm on, uh, so I found another plumber since then. Uh, and, and so I had to replace that plumber. Uh, like my, my initial electrician, uh, he didn't really put me off or stuff. He was up front that he was too busy for me sometimes. And, and, and so that was, uh, and so now I've got, a, you know, an electrician that I can call and he'll be there in an hour if I need him, if there's an emergency thing. So yeah, that's been part of the growth is people recognizing that I'm growing and, you know, it, it's less work for them to find one big client than multiple small ones. Was the plumber halfway through a job when you had to let him go or did you, uh, did you finish? No, one? that was, that was actually, so he had worked on two projects and yeah, I guess you're right. He was halfway through two of the jobs. I mean, run us through that conversation. That's not an easy one to have. Like, what did, what did you say? What did you, how did you? Well, approach? so the thing was, was he was putting me off, right? So Eventually, finally, he said, oh, hey, I have time to come see your project now. And it was just a, it was a relatively easy, well, I had to find somebody else because right. I needed to move forward. Was there any hiccups with the city? Like, because secondary suites and, and basement apartments and things like that were relatively new with the, I mean, were the, were the building inspectors good about it? Or was there growing pains there in terms of, because it was... Actually, you know, you watch those HGTV shows and people are always complaining about the building inspectors and stuff. I've had none of that. I've built great relationships with, uh, we've got five or six inspectors in the city and I've, I've worked with all of them now. And, and uh, I've had none of that. I've had nothing but good experiences with the, the building inspectors. They're, they're there to help. If they, if they see that you're, you know, this is a good piece of advice, I think. If they see that you're trying to do the right thing, they're mm -hmm. willing to help. Yeah. Uh, so I would actually even consider them part of my team. What's your advice for people that want to get into doing multiple transactions at the same time? What would be your first uh, step in terms of looking at doing multiple transactions? Um, if you haven't done it before, then get a good coach that mm. can coach you through it. Cause it's, there's some pain points They're, they're uh, like, you know, now I'm, I'm essentially working two full job, time jobs at a time. So it's, it's busy work. It, 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 there, there's a lot of work involved. Um, and so you know, be ready for that. It's not easy. How, how do you manage your time then? If you've got a full-time job and you're, when are you able to take time out of your full-time job to, to deal with properties? Cause I'm guessing your trades people are on site nine to five, Monday to Friday kind of thing. You have a job. How do you manage all that? Yeah. Um, 
so that's one of the nice things about my job I, it is it, uh, so I teach at the university so you know it's not a thing of uh, having to be anywhere at a specific time. It's not a job where I have to be anywhere at a specific time. I have tasks to do and it, it, uh, my hours are flexible that way with the job. So if there is an urgent thing that I have to go show up for, um, that's, that works. What would you say has been your biggest uh, challenge of growing your business? Yeah, um, I guess it was at the start, we, we, right at the start, it was building the team. So there was the plumber. The other thing was a designer. My, the first designer I used, um, he took three months to get my, even the preliminary drawings for my first design. And, uh, you know, he had come recommended, but I, I sit and looking back, it was another, he does multi-unit big building designs. Mm -hmm. And so I, I was too small for him. And, uh, but, you know, it was a thing of a month and a half of, oh, I'll get to you next week. I'll get to you next week, get to you next week. And, you know, me learning that I can't take that. And, uh, you know, I don't have to stay with him. But it was like I was already vested because I had paid half the deposit, right? And so it was like, that was a painful one because that, pro you know, all these three months before you even get the designs, I was, that delayed that project. So, but since then, you know, I found a designer that uh, she was, you know, she was, I, I hired her about two months after I hired this guy and she had her designs before I had the other one. So I've got a great designer now and she did really good. She put really good use to COVID and, and now I'm getting designs from her in, in a couple of days, preliminary drawings in a couple of days from her. Fern, run us through your team. I mean, I think you've talked about a lot of different people, but who would you consider from sort of beginning to end as, as being a part of your team? Yeah. Uh, so my realtor, realtor is my, you know, number one, part of your team uh he's bringing me the deals um and then uh yeah so i've got my construction crew i've got my plumber electrician uh my, my designer um i've got an hvac person uh yeah that's what about financing how are you doing working financing do you do a lot of private lending or do you do like bank financing or how do you have a right so so we're doing all with jvs and and our jv partners we have a um a mortgage specialist with scotia bank that we work with um and so she's funding she's she's working on the funding side for our jv partners and so your jv partners i'm guessing are coming in they're they're um putting up the down payment capital and qualifying for financing yeah. Uh, are they also putting up the rental funds? That's right. Nice. And then, so at the end of the, you know, let's call it the buy, renovate, uh, rent, refinance or rent, um, yeah. you're, are, when you're pulling, are you pulling cash out and are they getting uh, some of that money that they've invested back after the initial refinance? Right. right. So our, our bare, bare, bare minimum is, is we got to get the refinance money or the rehab money back. Mm -hmm. Um, Typically, we're leaving about, so we're buying um, around the 300, 320 mark. We're refinancing around the 420 mark uh, with and a 60 to 80 refinance uh, rehab. So we're, we're typically leaving 40 to 60,000 left in the property. So 40 to 60,000 on a, on a $420,000 asset. Um, and um, yeah, so, and so we're getting ROIs of like, 50%, 50 to 100% somewhere in there. We have had one where uh, we, we got more, we got all the money back plus some. Mm. Um, we knew that one, we, we got a really good deal on it. So we knew that was gonna be a home run deal like that. And, and uh, you know, we could have found 20 JV partners for that one. So we found a partner that was willing to take a, a good solid double as well as the home run. Uh, mm -hmm. And, and uh, there we go. So that's how we marketed that one. Where do you go from here, Fern? Like what's, what's next for you? Where do you, I know that you've been, you've been super busy. Um, how do you, how do you want to grow and, and how do you keep growing? Um, Cause I'm guessing you want to find an opportunity to keep what you have right now, but also be able to expand on that. Yeah. Um, so right now I got to stop being busy in the business, work, working in the business. Um, right. I'm doing all the, I'm self-managing all the, the property management stuff. Uh, I mentioned the bookkeeping stuff already. Um, and then there's my job. Um, <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, I am on track uh, to, uh, to, to leave the job very soon. Uh, you know, talking days rather than months and weeks and months now. Um, so, uh, so there's that. Um, you know, I am grooming a guy to take over the, the maintenance part of the property management uh, stuff. 
Uh, so that's freeing up my time. And, and when I'm full time, uh, uh, when I do quit the job, uh, you know, I will then have more time and then to start, I figure I can double, double what I've done last year. I can do that. Which part of that transaction do you see holding on to? Like, are you going to want to be part of acquisition um, and, and, and all of that? Or are you going to sort of be able to source that out from, from somewhere else? Yeah. So it, it's kind of acquisition is the fun part, like going to look at the properties and, 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 and making the offers on the property. That's the fun part. And, and, you know, I even, you know, my car coach, I, I talked about how, you know, I'm, I'm busy working in the business. Sometimes I, I remember a, a conversation I had with my coach where um, she had pointed out a property to me and, a, and I, I was just, you know, it's hard. Let's, let's not sugarcoat it. It's hard at times. And I hadn't gone to see the property because I was inundated, overwhelmed with working in the business and uh and but um and, and you know she, you know she her line was you're telling me you're too busy doing the 20 dollar an hour jobs to do the hundred thousand or a hundred and thousand dollar job and i'm like yep <laughs> anyway so that was an eye-opener for me any final thoughts on uh for those folks that are just really you know looking to do multiple transactions at the same time um, a piece of advice that you'd have for them to, to, to just take that first step. How do they, I don't know, how do they start looking at uh, building a business? Yeah. So for me, it was, it was having a coach that had done it before. Yeah. And, and, you know, one of the things I did do early on, and yeah, I was a small fish, but I certainly sold myself as, Hey, you're getting in on the ground floor. Um, you know, this is where I'm going, uh, you know, to make myself appealing to, to those, those, um, those trades people is, is uh, you know, I'm not just your regular small fish. I, I am going somewhere. And, and uh, so I sold myself to them a little bit, say, hey, come work for me. And then being able to follow through on that, right? I think it's right. one thing to talk the talk, but then if you can walk the walk and those people actually see that you're building, you know, something out that they can be a part of, like you say, if you're taking a contractor from having two employees working for you and with you to six and then 99% of his business is with you, he's going to be pretty loyal and pretty excited to, to get that call and, and pretty motivated to, to pick up the phone when you, when you do reach out. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Well, that's uh, I appreciate your time this morning, Fern. I think that, uh, you know, really uh, you're a true inspiration for a lot of people that want to be able to buy multiple properties, do multiple transactions at the same time. And, um, and I'll leave your information in the description below. People can reach That's out great. to you and, and hopefully uh, you'll get a few calls of people wanting to pick your brain on how you're able to do it because you've got a wealth of knowledge that I think you can pass on to people. So thanks so much for, for joining me this morning. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this session me. with Fern, we go, yeah, if you guys enjoyed the session with Fern, go ahead and hit the like button below. You can also subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and please feel free to leave comments and questions for both Fern and myself. Uh, you can also check out my website, follow me on Facebook and Instagram. And with that, I'll say Fern, thanks again for joining me. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and uh, I look forward to connecting with you very soon. All right. Thank thanks, you. Man. No problem. Talk to you soon. Bye.